add a half a cup of coconut oil and that would be in place of any um, cooking oils that your recipe calls for. I highly recommend to use the coconut oil because it's much better for you than any other oil or butter on the planet. And to give it that buttery taste, I add the nutritional yeast B12 supplement. So just about a tablespoon. Okay, and then some pink Himalayan salt. And that would be our replacement for any butter or any um, oils that your recipe calls for. So you're on your way to getting healthier, feeling better, looking better, the whole nine yards. Okay, and I'm going to help you. Okay, so next we're going to add um, two, well, actually four tablespoons of applesauce. This would be your replacement uh, for your eggs, okay? Eggs are, one egg I believe is 280 um, grams of cholesterol, and that's a lot of cholesterol. We cannot afford that. So, and everything I'm using is organic, so you want to stick with that if you can. Okay, and I know organic costs a little more, but in the long run, it is the best investment because your health has no price tag. So, we want to stay as healthy as we can with a little money or whatever money we have and prioritize. Okay, so there we go. And then we're just going to add about two teaspoons of vanilla. I just give it a couple squirts. Okay. Here we go. Now we're going to mix this in. Oh, and we can't forget the milk. We have to do one cup of milk. Okay, and I use almond milk. Almond milk has, um, believe it or not, more calcium than regular milk. In one cup of 2% fat milk, contains 293 milligrams of calcium versus one cup of almond milk contains 455 milligrams of calcium. So we don't want to get osteoporosis, people. So let's start now while we're still young and youthful and smart and wise, have the technology, the internet to um, gain wisdom and knowledge, okay? And stay connected with each other. All right, so there we have it. So this is going to be our cake. Now we're going to mix it with the blender to get it nice and light and fluffy. Okay, so I'm turn this on. And this helps it get really, um, it, it helps it rise. I think the more you blend it, um, the more chance of it being more light and fluffy. Because that's one thing that's difficult is finding uh, recipes when they're gluten-free and vegan um, to be light and fluffy. They're more hearty. So I find that using the blender helps a great deal with this recipe. can add an extra tablespoon of yeast. Okay, another tablespoon of yeast. Can't harm you. Okay. Now if you find that it's a little bit thick, you can add a little more milk. There, but it is going to be a thicker consistency than a cake batter, more like a bread dough, because this is going to be like um, the texture of more like a coffee cake. Okay,
take off the beater brushes. And this is my favorite part of being vegan, and I have to say the kids too. Robbie, Jesse, this is our favorite part. Back in the days, we were able to lick our parents' beater brushes and, and uh, bowls, but we didn't realize about the salmonella and the eggs. Now we know. So we can no longer lick them if we're using eggs. But So this is my kids' favorite part. Yes, Robbie? Where's your sister? Here, bring one to her. Jesse? So they love it. And if it, if it passed the kids' test, that's key. Gotta pass the, the kid-friendly test and we are on track. I used to make it every year for the kids' birthdays, for parties, for any family occasions, but I didn't know how to make it the healthier version, and I just finally mastered and learned it. I'm excited to share and teach everybody. delicious as well. And we're just going to smooth it out. Okay, so this is the vanilla section. And I'm going to add a little twist to this cake. The second batch, I'm going to turn into strawberry. What do you think, <laughs> Jess? Does that sound good? Did she just photobomb video about me. Is there such a thing? I think so. Okay, so here we go. We have the first part all done, first layer, and now I have these delicious dehydrated strawberries that we just picked up at the supermarket, and I'd like to add these to the second batch of the cake. Okay. We're going to incorporate this. So the sec second layer is going to be a strawberry layer, which is going to be totally delicious and totally yummy. Okay, I'm very excited. Okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And now we're going to stir it in. There we go. And you can kind of mush them in if you want to, you know, to spread the strawberry flavor. Something new, you know? You kind of get sick of the same old foods. We want to try something new and healthy. That's key. So I just uh, stirred that in, so there's just little chunks of strawberries here and there. And let's see how this one comes out. Now we're going to take this one. And put it in the second pan. And if 
you don't have a rubber scraper, go out and get one. <laughs> they are so awesome. They help save time and money. There. So now we're just going to smooth it out onto the second layer pan and on parchment paper. what that one looks like. Okay, and then they're ready to go in the oven. And we'll see you in a little bit for round two. Hi again. So the cake's all done. Here's how it looks. And that went in for 26 minutes. It smells delicious. It's nice and golden brown on top. So while those two are cooling, we're going to make an amazing Cool Whip type of frosting. So I started with adding some freeze-dried strawberries. Okay, let's get that set up there. Okay. Set some freeze-dried strawberries in here. And now to that we're going to add um, culinary original coconut milk. Okay. It's nice and thick and creamy. And to that. We're going to add a little bit of soy, I'm sorry, sunflower lecithin. This is the sunflower lecithin. It's a thickening agent and also very good for you. It helps fight Alzheimer's, so that's good to know. I'm only going to add, so it does have a, um, a taste to it, and we want to disguise the taste. We just want to add it for thickening. So I'm just going to put a teaspoon of sunflower lecithin. Then we're going to add a little bit of vanilla extract, again about a teaspoon, a little light agave syrup, um, we want it to be sweet, so a tablespoon and a half, and then some ground chia seed, this is another thickening agent, also very good for you, loaded with omega-3 and fiber, very healthy. I'm going to put one tablespoon. One heaping tablespoon. And then we're going to blend this up. And then we're just going to set this in the fridge to harden. And I'll be back to show you the consistency and what our next step is. Okay, so we're back. So while the um, strawberries and coconut cream ganache is cooling in the fridge, we're going to be slicing some really yummy organic um just gold only the finest for the finest berries they're so delicious looking i just rinsed them off with some ro water and we're going to just slice these nice and thin let me set that camera down so you can see we're just going to take the tops off and you can eat these because most of the nutrients are in the green so i'm going to eat them very good. And then we're just going to slice these nice and thin. Um, lower the radio. And there, we're just going to give them a nice thin slice, if you can see, about a quarter of an inch or so. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take this top off. And also, we are going to be using some organic sliced peaches. These are so delicious. And these we're just going to put in the, the actual size that they are, which is about this big, not thick, and that's fine. You don't have to slice them. If you get like a really thick one, um, like this one, you can slice it. 
So it fits nicer inside the cake. So yeah, you can give them a little slice. This one too is a little thick. Because you want them down to about a quarter of an inch, okay? Okay, so we have the strawberries and peaches sliced and ready to put on our layer cake. So first what we're going to do is add a little bit of our strawberry and coconut cream ganache. It's still not as hard as I'd like it to be, but I'm not going to frost the entire cake. I'm just doing the inside right now, so it's okay to use it. Tomorrow it'll be, or later on this afternoon, will be a lot thicker. So we're going to put a nice thin layer, just coating the top of um, the first layer. Okay, just to get the peaches and strawberries to stay put. So we're using it like a glue, okay? A yummy, healthy glue. And I just have it on a little turntable, it makes it easier to frost. Okay, a little bit more. There. Okay, and now, we're going to add peaches and the strawberries. And you just place them on like a puzzle. And you can do this layer cake any way you like. There's lots of different methods, but this method works for me. This is how I've done it in the past, and I haven't had any complaints. So, just layer it on like that. It's so fun. It's like cre you're creating. You're being using your artistic abilities and preparing a delicious dish for the whole family. Cooking is awesome. I love cooking. And don't worry about if you think you missed a spot or there's not enough peaches in one area and... You know, if you slice it and no one's going to get a strawberry or a peach because we're going to put some on top. So we'll take care of that. There's going to be some on top, too. Okay. So that's pretty good. And there's some nice extras. And then we're going to add another layer of the strawberry ganache. Just nice and thin. You don't need to put a whole bunch. Okay. Enough to sort of even it out and get everything to stay in put. There, just so a little bit of everything is being covered. Okay, now the fun part. We're going to add our top layer. And then put it in the fridge to cool for about an hour or so, okay? You'll know when it's ready. So pretty already. Wow, ah, gorgeous. Voila. Okay, are we ready for round two? Uh, the cream cheese was sitting in the refrigerator, and it's nice and stiff, and our cake is ready to frost. So let's get to it. Let me set this up. See? Oh, it looks so delicious. It's nice and firm. So now we're just going to plop this on top, just like you're frosting a regular cake with the confectionery frosting. But instead, we're doing a healthy strawberry and coconut cream ganache. So just put about half on top. And we go ahead, and I have it on a turntable. It helps a lot. Um, to, to frost it, coat it. So this is the best part. This is the frosting on the cake. So it spreads nicely. It's a great, delicious, healthy alternative to the cane powdered sugar frostings out there on the market today. Um, loaded with health benefits, vitamins and minerals. And you don't feel sick after you eat this. You don't feel fat. You don't feel guilty. You feel happy 
and healthy the way you should feel. We're going to enjoy this life as much as we can. We can feel our best, look our best, and be the best that we can be. And it starts with the foods you eat. It starts in the kitchen. So see how simple this is? And especially on the turntable, you could just turn it. You don't have to really do much. And then we're going to add a little more to the sides here. Yeah, don't be shy. There's plenty. There's plenty to go around. You don't have to be shy when you're adding this. You can be very generous with it. Now, I let mine sit overnight in the fridge. And that's why it's really nice and firm. But I think if you um, leave it in for about an hour or two, it'll get firm like this. And like I said, it's, it's sort of like a, like a whipped cream cheese texture. Maybe even a little firmer, which makes it great and easy for frosting. This really came out very good. And the chia seed um, powder or chia seed, you don't have to have the power. You can actually use the seeds. You can't really taste them. They swell and they thicken. Any type of sauce or frosting you're making. And the more longer they sit, the thicker it gets. So we did just enough frosting. Mine was uh, a total of two repeats on the strawberry ganache. Oh, this just looks heavenly. It really looks so delicious. Can't wait to try it. That's going to be the best part. We get to enjoy it. Really enjoy it without the guilt. It really frosts very nicely, as you can see. So I'm just using a butter knife. You can use anything. You can use a spatula. You can use they have they have those fancy cake. Um, Frosters, but I always found a butter knife works just as good, and everyone has a butter knife in their kitchen. Most people do. Very fortunate to have anything I have in my kitchen. Love it all. Very grateful for every nook and cranny in here. Giving thanks every day. Yeah. Voila. Does that look beautiful? And then for the top, of course, you can do anything you like. We're going to um, decorate it with some peaches and strawberries. Why not? Just a couple little parts here I want to stick. You can spend as much time on this as you want to. As much time as you want to put into it. There, that looks so pretty. And then you can just take a little napkin and clean off the edges a little if you'd like. I'll just get a little napkin here and I just wrap it around my finger like this, like that. And then I just kind of scoot around it like that. And it just gives it a nice clean finish. So it looks professional bakery made. 
Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. So now we're going to add, and you can design this any way you like. I'm going to put a fresh strawberry right smack on top with the green because that's the healthiest part. And then I'm going to just, I don't know, just decorate it however you like, whatever you think looks pretty. Make like a flower star type of thing. Yeah. And then let's add some peaches. Maybe we can just add some peaches around it. Make it look like a fancy 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 cake like I said any way you do it is gonna be beautiful you can't go wrong when it comes to artistic work everybody is unique in their artistic abilities and everything is beautiful in your own special way To put passion into it. Flip that one over. Then you can't go wrong. So I just slice these peaches a little bit thinner so they're not too clumpy. One thing I love about these organic peaches is they do not come in that thick corn syrup. Um, I'm going to slice a couple more. The thick corn syrup that the peaches at the grocery store mostly contain. This one has applesauce. So, and I just strain the applesauce, I mean applesauce, apple juice, I'm sorry. And I just strain the apple juice. Ooh, that looks so pretty. There's the final product. How's that look? It is again. Voila. Mwah. Stop. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so here we are. We have the finished product. Here's what it looks like. It is really, really, really delicious. It cut very well. And here's what the slice looks like. Doesn't that look so good? And now I'm dying to try it. I can't wait to try it, I should say. We don't want to die. Nobody wants to die now. Okay, so... I am going to be the guinea pig here. No, I'm getting the first slice. Oh, somebody's going to beat me to it. All right, that's awesome. Hold on, Jesse. Let me get it for you. Here she goes. Mm. Is it good? That's the strawberry layer. So we have a strawberry layer and we have a so vanilla. Good. Is it good? Okay, Mommy's going to have to try it. She likes it. Kid-friendly, I should add. <laughs> Okay, let's see. How's it going to be? How's it going to be? Here we go. Oh my gosh. Really, really good. Mother approved. And it came out really delicious. Um, you can see here, almost all of it half of it is gone. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Let me get you a little closer here. Okay. So it looks really good and it cuts really well. That's what I love about it. It cuts really, really well. I'm going to cut a piece right about here. And as you can see there, Look how well that cuts. And it looks delicious. It tastes delicious. It is delicious. Something the whole family can enjoy and love. And carry it down from tradition to tradition. And it's healthy. I hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching.
and we'll see you soon.